what's going on guys today i'm going to be sharing with you guys 10 different downsides to the galaxy s8 plus and there's going to be a couple that are sort of linked in with each other and stuff like that and in no particular order i'm going to be going through them and please bear in mind that this is my opinion and no fact on the matter or anything like that so in my opinion this device is very very slippy it needs a case i bought the spidgen case here the neo hybrid and it's very very nice i highly recommend it i also highly recommend any other spidgen case because it's very very good but the device definitely needs a case because as you can see here the device is already slipping down my hand and obviously you're not just going to hold it like that but it does have a bit of grip to it in all honesty, but because it is glass and everything like that, I would highly recommend getting a case because it can be very slippy and also just to protect that device. Now, another thing is a screen protector. I would definitely get a screen protector on this device as well. I do not have one currently, but I will be buying one as soon as I can. I'm... I mean, I threw the ones that I bought away because they weren't very good. They wouldn't stick or anything like that. It was really frustrating. So I got rid of them. And also they were yellow, which I don't know why they were yellow, but they were. So I just ended up getting rid of them. Now, the device also is a fingerprint magnet. This is point two on my list or one of the other points on my list. I don't know whether you guys can see, but yeah like if you get really really in there really close at certain aspects or certain yeah you can see right there how many fingerprints there are on this thing it's kind of insane and that's with me using a case 99% of the time I only ever don't use the case when I am um, wireless charging on. another point is that Android updates do don't come until the next flagship is released the updates are very slow and i do not like that about it the reason behind me saying that is well the pixel xl that i had had 8.1 pretty much as soon as it came out this thing is still running 7.1 or whatever and samsung user experience 8 point something or other so up next on the list is the actual speaker of the device and I have to say that the speaker on the device is pretty loud I'm not going to be turning it up to maximum volume because it will peak the microphone but if I just go in and start playing you know, some music um, that I have on my phone So you can see that when you do have your hands like this or whatever and you're watching a video, you can definitely, you know, cover that speaker up very, very easily and then the sound just completely dies off very, very quickly. And that is something I definitely don't like about the device. However, I negate this like 99% of the time because I very much use headphones or a Bluetooth speaker pretty much 100% of the time. Like. I have this Bluetooth speaker here, I have another one like right in front of me on my desk and I also have a couple, like two or three pairs of headphones that I use when I go out and walk around and stuff like that so I don't generally use the speaker itself for audio consumption or anything like that. Another thing that is kind of annoying is the Bixby button. As you guys know, the Bixby button is on the left hand side of the phone you hit it it opens bixby and you know it you can deactivate it i wish i could program it to activate you know google assistant or something else or like program it to open my music app or something like that i feel like that would have been a really really neat feature to have it's almost like the squeeze feature of the google pixel xl where you can just 
or the Pixel 2, sorry, where you can squeeze the bottom of the phone and activate the Google Assistant to be able to ask it a question or whatever. Now, Bixby is actually pretty cool. You can get it to set reminders, you can get it to set different things and open different things and stuff like that. If you watch Linus's video on it or Linus Tech Tips video on Bixby, and maybe Marcus Brownlee or MKBHD or whatever, you know, them sort of guys, they did more in-depth videos on Bixby itself, and I think that the features that it does offer, once it starts to learn about different things, will be very, very useful to people. But the Bixby button is something that I catch, not as often as I expect it to, but especially when you're in the dark and you're trying to turn the volume down, like between here and here, you can't tell which button which almost, and you do end up hitting it on the off chance. Like it does, it doesn't happen as often as I thought, but it does happen on occasion, and when it does, it's kind of annoying. Moving on to our next point, the fingerprint scanner is next to the camera. It's right there. Obviously it works, like it, it works pretty well. As you guys can see there, like if I log my phone, it does unlock it pretty well. It does take a little bit to get your finger in the right place because of the shape of it. I wish it was just round like the Google Pixel, but it is what it is. I've got iris scanning and all that sort of good stuff activated on this device, so I don't actually have to you know, work on that as much as, you know, you would think. You don't have to worry about it too much, you can just do it. it like, it, for me, my hands, as you guys can see, the way I hold my phone, I generally hold it like that anyway, so, like, me pressing the fingerprint scanner is just easy sauce. Like, it's really easy, I don't hit the camera as often as I thought, but I would have preferred it to be smart bang in the middle of the device, kind of where the Samsung logo is, or kind of just below the camera. I think that would have been perfect. However, you do get some compromises here and there, regardless of which device you buy. So, the next point that I have about the SA Plus, or the SA as well, is the fact that the default apps, the Samsung experience, is not going to be everybody's taste it definitely isn't my taste in the way i like things to look and the way i like things to be but that's probably because i've been used to the pixel xl for about two years at this point like i have literally been going through and um, changing everything to kind of look like this i like the you know the always on display and that but once i go into my phone itself and unlock the phone you guys can see that my home launcher represents or basically looks like a Pixel XL2 or a Pixel 2 XL or something like that. I've got Android Messages there, I've got the Samsung Camera app which is fine because the Google one's not that amazing anyway. But as you guys can see, I've actually got Nova Launcher on this thing and I've got the Prime version of it and I really like the way I've customised it. Obviously some people will love the Samsung experience and people buy Samsung because they're used to it and because they love that type of phone and everything like that. I bought it because I love the phone itself, like I love the design of it, but the actual experience of the phone has changed so much since the last time I had a Samsung and what I've been used to and everything like that. So I've actually got a combination of the two. So I've installed a Pixel Icon Pack, I've installed um, Nova Launcher and a few other things to customize the device to what I want it to be. I've installed Google Keyboard and stuff like that as well because I'm just used to that keyboard. I can just type away on it, no problem, and I know exactly where everything is. Now that's just me. Some people will love the Samsung user experience and that is obviously up to them and up to people's priority and what they love in a phone. So that so in my personal opinion, the 18 by 9 screen aspect ratio is amazing. I really love it for content creation or content consumption and everything like that, YouTube videos and all the rest of it. As long as things are really, really nice when it comes to that and it works in that particular way. However, for my personal taste and the way I like to watch videos, you guys can see right here, okay, if, I if I zoom in, it makes it cinematic and also it can crop it kind of crops the screen a little bit now the other thing i have to say about that is that it actually doesn't crop it very much 
And I would hopefully like to say and like to think that in the future, 18 by 9 screen aspect ratios with more devices like the LG V30, the S8, the S8 Plus and the Google Pixel and the iPhone 10, and all that with more and more devices coming out with that screen ratio, I think more and more support will be given to this aspect ratio and there will not be a resizing issue. Things will be scaled for you before you even open that YouTube video or whatever. I think that is something that you guys can expect to see, you know, in the future. But that's just my opinion. It's something that I would love to see in the future, but it is what it is. Another thing is that a lot of the apps that you that are on the phone pre-installed, you know, bloatware from your carrier or from you know any other like company whether it's the samsung apps or whatever there's tons of apps on here that you may not have even ever use you, know, you like, can have maybe five to ten apps that samsung or whatever has installed on this device and you may not use any of them you know one of the ones that i use at the moment is samsung music player now other people will install vlc me media player i don't use samsung messaging app but I have it and I can't get rid of it because it's pre-installed on the phone and I downloaded Android messages and started using that as my default messaging app. So my final gripe or final downside to the Galaxy S8 is the fact that it is sort of a magnet for people to look at. It's something that's going to make you stand out because of the size of the screen and everything like that. I've currently got the camera app open and that is another thing that I wanted to mention is the fact that the camera is very very nice obviously it's one of the better rated cameras out there and you know i just took this picture but when it comes to it the saturation and everything like that has been very very sort of sort of photos get over saturated the photos get over saturated some of the photos get blown out with the hdr and stuff like that especially depending on what you what the subject is that you're shooting and it can also really overdo it when it comes to the colors and stuff like that. But some people really love that thing about Samsung cameras and the way that the cameras are implemented into the Samsung phone. So that is obviously something that it's either you love it or you hate it. And the camera on this thing, I think it's really, really good. I just think it needs a bit of tweaking to get it perfect. So... I would say mess around with the manual modes in the camera settings and everything like that and change all the settings and make sure that it's everything that you want it to be before snapping that photo because otherwise you could end up with some results that you did not expect. So Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to smash that thumbs up button, don't forget to subscribe more if you haven't already and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.